so again, thanks for uh, allowing me the, or affording me the opportunity to speak. It's a, it's a distinct pleasure to be here. The objectives of my talk are, are simple, uh, to become more familiar with the challenges of trials in glioblastoma, to learn a little bit more about convection enhanced delivery and oncologic virus clinical trials, and the GBM antiviral trial. In essence, trials that are, are going to go either uh, into phase three, uh, with particular agents that I'll mention, uh, or potentially serve as registrational trials. So uh, this slide just shows us in comparison where we're at with lung cancer, so to speak, um, and uh, not, not great, right? There's only been a few approvals in brain cancer in the past few decades, as opposed to multiple approvals in lung cancer and the like. And, and there are a variety of reasons for this. Um, that some of which we'll touch on. But for right now, upfront treatment as has been outlined to some degree for GBM is surgery followed by radiation, followed by temidar, maybe plus or minus BEV, and then plus or minus optin, depending on the adoption rates. And then treatments for recurrence are repeat resection with or without wafers or change in chemo, pre-radiation, radio surgery, uh, BEV, three challenges, types of chemotherapy or, or opportunity or forced clinical trials. And, as such, new treatments are, of course, desperately needed. Again, there are many reasons for the challenges of why we haven't advanced more. And the next two slides talk about them. And I'll just mention them as I think they're relevant. The tumor challenges um, are in particular that these tumors are very aggressive. They're heterogeneous in terms of space and time, have redundant signaling pathways, are very invasive, have particular microenvironment uh, variables that influence how they may or may not respond. Uh, they spread easily, are immunosuppressive, of stem cell resistance to therapy, we have relatively poor models, and of course, limited resources and industry uh, support from industry sponsors and the like. The treatment challenges are the delivery of the drug to the tumor through the blood brain barrier, any type of systemic toxicity of CNS directed treatments, the susceptibility of normal brain to therapy related injury, um, especially with radiation. Obviously, limited therapeutic response, and of course, the intrinsic resistance built into any of the therapies we use, and again, limited resources and interest from industry partners and the like. So, the, the, the landscape also of clinical trials is, is not necessarily our friend. We suffer from uh, an anguish of choice. There are about 1,500 trials that began if you look on clinicaltrials.gov. Not, not all are presently enrolling, but it's about a third. And you know, this is because there's numerous target varieties of targets to go after, varieties of combination. There are a myriad of therapeutic hypotheses, and we lack a prioritization strategy, both nationally and internationally, to address this. We've not paid or been successful uh, in paying attention to biomarkers and still use, of course, MGMT and IDH, but perhaps more relevant biomarkers will become more important in management and trial design. And we have to simply pay attention to that. We, to what we all believe is true, that combination therapy is likely something that needs to be done uh, with or without immunotherapy. And as such, that's going to take more than one sponsor, if you will, coming together to do that. However, again, I'm here to talk about sort of more immediate, promising clinical trials. And so I'll touch on these three areas, improving drug delivery through CNS through CDP, infection against delivery, immunotherapy, and adaptive trials. So first, convection-enhanced delivery is simply sort of evidenced uh, or seen in this slide, if you will, where uh, it, the CED utilizes a catheter-based approach to inject the solute containing a therapeutic agent directly into the brain parenchyma under positive pressure. This technique, of course, bypasses the blood-brain barrier and gets target or agent through the target, if you will, to the tumor. The extent of distribution is far better than that of diffusion methods alone. And furthermore, there's uh, the ability to monitor how you do this. Um, one way is to use real-time uh, MRI uh, when you co-infuse gadolinium uh, with the agents and can image where you're hitting. So, you know, this bypasses the limitations of systemically administered chemo uh, and gets more drug to where it needs to be. And this is of increasing importance as the software and hardware associated with this type of delivery becomes less expensive and even less expensive than that. So a CED injection at UCSF is around 20 grand, the infusion of the vast is 25, just to give you a benchmark. And again, I mentioned the second generation convection enhanced delivery does uh, 
pose more promise as the catheters themselves are better and can be better placed. They also prevent backflow and you can use real-time monitoring to ensure coverage of where you think the drug should go. Then comes the chemistry part of this. And what drugs do you use? Do you use nanoparticles, prodrugs? What chemistry goes into your agent discovery? And there's much work to be done here. And in and of itself, you know, the talk. What I'm going to talk about is MDNA55 that was used in the CEB trial. This is a targeted fusion protein comprising a genetically engineered interleukin 4 fused to a modified version of the pseudomonal exotoxin. So it targets IL 4 positive tumor in its microenvironment, which is commonly uh, overexpressed in real blastoma, but not all of them. And so what happens is MDNA55 binds to the receptor, the IL 4 receptor expressed in the, the, the membrane of the GBM, the pseudomonas exotoxin is cleaved and activated and basically causes inhibition of protein synthesis and ultimately apoptosis. This trial was, uh, or this drug was used in a phase two trial, um, phase two B study designed. Uh, the NCT number is listed here if you wanna look it up, it was done at the institution at the bottom of the slide. Basically, retrospectively, IL-4 was looked at, but based, uh, was in first a relapse Second, uh, or primary GBM, sorry. No resection was done, but biopsy was done to confirm uh, recurrence. APS was 70, IDH wild type only. MRI was done to limit uh, tumor size to less than four centimeters in diameter. Optimal catheter trajectory was planned. Image guided catheter placement was performed. And then MDNA was monitored with co infusion at Magnavis to some degree. At first, it was a whole infusion. And then after that, it was only a single hour of the infusion which could last up to 24 to 48 hours. The endpoints were survival, radiographic response, PFS, uh, and median overall survival versus IL-4 expression, and of course, safety. What you find here is a somewhat busy slide, forgive me, but um, I, I don't know that I'll read this to you uh, in, in, in instead rather comment that ultimately the trial did change in a variety of ways from high dose to low dose, from looking at how the infusion could be performed in the, uh, in the entirety in the magnet suite where you would image the entire infusion to one that only needs to be imaged for an hour. But ultimately, uh, we also looked at IL-4 expression retrospectively. And ultimately, if you had IL-4 expression, certainly high, those patients did better. And the patients who got a higher dose of the drug, because that was also uh, changed with the trial, uh, did better as well. And so, in essence, you saw an increase of up to 100% in two-year survival rate, uh, even in patients with unmethylated MGMT. Uh, and so we thought that not only is the drug going to provide benefit, perhaps benefit to those patients who most need it. This was further helped with BEV, to some degree in a cohort of patients who did get BEV uh, and increased survival to 28.8 months. Uh, and then so in essence, findings demonstrated that by combining the precise drug delivery with targeting, you could have much superior uh, median overall survival as compared to historical control, which of course is always fraught with difficulty. However, this was a representative uh, study um, of recurrent GBM and they did create a confirmed control group to look at outcome from our patients and other institutions. And so these numbers are fairly believable. This has led to a phase three trial that will open this year. And that is outlined here, which is quite novel in itself and will be registrational. In essence, again, recurrent GBM randomized three to one to get MDNA or standard of care as defined uh, by the investigator, but also matched this external control that myself and others helped create in the FDA as approved as a way of speeding up trial enrollment and participation so that fewer patients just get standard of care and more patients get the actual treatment. So we look forward with great anticipation to this study getting started this year. It obviously takes institutions with the ability to do intraoperative types of injections and intracumbent delivery. Uh, obviously, immunotherapy has been uh, discussed in, uh, in part by Dr. Prinz. I'm going to touch on it as well. There are many parts uh, of the uh, timeline or uh, pathway where you can jump in uh, with different types of immunotherapy, be they vaccine, viral therapies, bite therapy, CAR T therapies, or others. Um, what I'm going to particularly talk about is oncolytic biotherapy, which seems to be the most interesting thing out there in immunotherapy world, uh, patients anyway. Um, there are currently 51 trials, 11 are recruiting, only a few are listed here on the slide. I'm gonna talk about two, the polio and DNA tricks. So polio is, uh, was, came from Istari or Duke, 
which was a phase two trial of PFS RIPO or polio on recurrent GPM. This in also included CED infusion of the virus at first with a dose of CCMU, but then that was actually uh, discontinued as it didn't seem to help and to be honest to proceed with the single infusion only. However, uh, BEV was used um, to manage the sequelae of swelling that often happens in these patients. It's not just unique to this viral therapy, it's seen in others, but in essence, what you use is a modified polio virus that binds to malignant cells uh, due to their abundance uh, of expressing certain protein, the virus infects and damages the tumor, releasing tumor antigen and broadcasting signals, which then neutrophils can invade and attack. Dendrites become infected with the virus, they stimulate T cells, and the T cells help to destroy the tumor. And so you can see inflammation uh, in that you perhaps want to have happen. And when looked at closely, in essence, uh, in this trial, you did see a survival benefit. And this, uh, I did. So um, this is going to move forward now in a, in a phase two, what might be registrational study, where you're going to combine the polio virus with Pembro, which is a checkpoint blocker, and the combination of which might actually be better in terms of upping that immune response and detection. Um, the red line is to signify that there will be a safety lead in for these two agents, which have not been previously used. But then after that, we fully expect that the study will move forward and uh, uh, use uh, endpoints of six month and 12 month uh, response endpoints uh, to see if we uh, can prove benefit here. And this trial is up and running at several places already. Oops. I don't know what happened there. Sorry about that. Can someone put the slides back on? I don't know. Stand by, Dr. Bukowski. I'm, is that, I apologize about that. There we go. All right, just to keep you on your toes. So another virus to talk about is the DNA tricks virus, which is also going to move into a phase three trial. Um, this is an adenovirus uh, that's been engineered um, with two stable changes to replicate selectively retinoblastoma pathway deficient cells and to infect cells that express certain RGP binding integrins more efficiently. Basically, all tumor cells are infected in RP function and already in the cell cycle. So the DNA virus preferentially replicates in these cells and kills them. Um, so this is a, a busy slide. Basically, it's just to see, uh, to show you uh, that the DNA trix has already moved through phase one. And in fact, I'll talk about phase two in a second. They had two groups here. You don't need to bother with the particulars, but in essence, they did see some inflammation before improvement in patients. It was proved safe, of course, with some promising overall survival of 20% of patients at three years. And then it moved into phase two with Pembro, like polio is just done, except this study with Pembro is also finished. So this is DNA trix plus Pembro in a dose escalation fashion and then in a dose expansion fashion with the primary endpoint of safety and overall response rate. This reported out at SNOW in November at 48 patients that were dosed uh, with both agents. And in essence, you found no DLTs, a median treatment duration of about five months, uh, adverse events were manageable, and median survival was a promising 12.5 months with five confirmed imaging responses and a clinical benefit of about 50% or so. So this has now also led to a randomized controlled phase three study, which will presumably start this year. So some big times, so big developments in your oncology uh, in general with what uh, three registrational studies moving forward this year, plus uh, already some upfront studies uh, that will move forward today. Good job. Lastly, I'll talk about GBM Agile, which is a, uh, international effort in newly diagnosed and recurrent glioblastoma within the adaptive trial landscape. In essence, has a master protocol that considers many experimental arms versus the common control. So you limit the common control at moment. This has new experimental arms that can be added at any time. And you have like a, a two-stage uh, 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 plan where you look at it early at hints of efficacy and enroll to those arms that look to be doing better than others primary endpoint is survival, uh, and it's been led uh, by a, a bunch of uh, important folks in, in the field across different continents with strong regulatory endorsement as well from the FDA and other bodies of the European body. 
So again, I, I mentioned the primary objectives here are to move agents uh, into trials for recurrence or newly diagnosed quickly, look at that stage one hint of efficacy, and then uh, triage patients towards those arms that are looking better uh, over time and are hopefully associated with biomarker signatures and what will hopefully be, again, seamless expansion designed to support an ultimate uh, drug application. So this gives you a graphic display of what is meant to happen here where patients come in, randomized to the experimental arm of control, that patient data and uh, outcomes are updated, the probability at stage one of benefit versus not is uh, calculated, and then any trial that, or any agent that doesn't look like it's passing muster will be stopped or continued if there's a hint or more than that of efficacy and graduated to end of stage two, where again, those arms for biomarker for most likely to benefit based on those biomarkers uh, help dictate where patients should be triaged. And so again, the goal here is to identify effective therapies for glioblastoma in a fast and less expensive way with fewer patients enrolling into arms that uh, are not based in control. In essence, there are three drugs open, regrafenib, axaliximab, and valoa 3 Regrafenib is a multi-tyrosine kinase inhibitor, especially with HF. Uh, Paxilisib is a PF3 kinase inhibitor, and valoa 3 is another novel type of DNA damaging agent that cross-links DNA in from an interstrand uh, uh, manner and uh, may be active not only in methylated patients, but in unmethylated patients. So um, all three drugs uh, are up and running in, in, uh, in Agile, and uh, hopefully more partners will join. With time, the first patient was enrolled actually in July of 2019. Over 400 patients have been screened as of, this, as of last month, um, with 36 sites open in the US and a few more to hopefully join with expansions in Canada, Europe, and China. Australia is also in discussion. And so with that, I thank you for the opportunity to present today. We very much look forward to these mature trials moving forward, and include, in, in addition to some upfront trials that may also be registrational, including de novo's and the storage.